you know peter it uh, this idea for doing this film came up yesterday at night when we were at dinner and i've been fairly intimidated since i haven't slept i wanted to sleep last night um because i guess as a student when i first saw when i first started reading about british high tech is when i saw uh, when i started is when i started reading about archigram and that's the first time i really read about you and that must have been my third year into architecture uh, maybe my second year into architecture and it's and i never really got to see you when i was in england but it was quite something to know that you're actually going to be here and we'll actually be involved with it being like a young architect it's it's scary to actually be sitting across you and have to ask you some questions <laughs> and i figure that they you know you've had so many interviews over the last few days that they probably asked you anything and everything possible so actually the first question i thought i'd ask you if i ever got to sit down and i would have asked even if we had not been doing this is that you have so much you you've had so many years of experience in architecture you pretty much i would say that you pretty much to the outside world you've dedicated your life to architecture do you when you look back now but has it been fun I think it's been enormous fun. I mean, I think one could say dangerously that I've been indulging. Uh but that always is meant as a negative by people. But I think uh, you can have creative indulgence. I think along the way of the indulgence you become not exactly only suspicious of some of the things that you do, but you become suspicious of everything. But if you have a certain psychology which is what I I call myself a a creative cynic. I think everything is 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 is, is of interest. and particularly things that don't work very well or particularly things that might happen particularly things that you didn't understand at the time and come back over uh, and i think one mixes these together like making a kind of uh, pudding of which you know half the ingredients uh, you have a suspicion that a quarter more of the ingredients might work and then you throw some stuff you've got in the back of the cupboard in and just see what happens and i feel that that one's creativity is rather like that and that's why i think that there is a a kind of for me fairly easy uh passage between making built buildings and doing watercolor drawings and somebody behind me doing a computer version of the watercolor drawing and somebody else saying have you heard about this this morning you know in the newspaper and you sort of stir them all up you're a bit suspicious of the newspaper you might be a bit bored with water coloring and you might wonder about the cr- correct choice of site of the building but you carry on and some of the oddities become the positives strangely enough and the predictables yes you knew that was good i mean the first thing that i discovered when i started making buildings was that I I I could draw and I could make models and I could talk about architecture and read about it but you never predicted how important it was when you had a radiator on a wall that cast a shadow or the soffit of the beam that cast a bigger shadow or the noise of somebody nearby that you didn't account for and in the same way with with the, the the drawings you you know many of these drawings not all i have had a i i'm not a sketcher i don't do pencil sketches much i as i draw underlays in pencil and as soon as it's going all right i get bored and start the ink and i make 80% of it up on the ink drawing and i sort of know what's going to happen but the the nicest bits are where i didn't predict and it turned into something weird and i think that's why Uh, I'm still a little bit suspicious. I'm not a luddite really, but I'm a little bit suspicious of the computer because of its predictability. Only now is there a generation of people who are artistically knowing how to pervert the computer and getting back to that same state. You're not a luddite at all. I I can't imagine any anything being further from the truth. But now in all this, um you know, you started out with these things way back. and it's been what 40 or 50 years when you look back and you see this work and a lot of which is a lot of 
which is still influencing people very strongly do you do you feel differently about it or do you think that the context very a lot like the scales on boards in greek i'm going to sound very arrogant now i think it's bloody marvelous i'm i'm amazed that i've done it all you know and i'm amazed i've still got ideas in my head that i haven't even done you know i i i i think an exhibition is very useful for the author himself or herself the same way as when you do a book it's very useful because suddenly you see it laid out there suddenly you have to post rationalize where it sits in your trajectory suddenly you see well, that wasn't such a bad idea or you see a drawing which you had kept in a, in a folio for a long time there are one or two in, in this exhibition that were hidden at the back of a portfolio and they come out again and you say my god yeah why have I forgotten that one you know and uh, it, it, it stimulates so in, in fact me in the time between visiting as soon as I knew the, the exhibition was happening after you visited London which isn't very long ago I went and did quite a large drawn project uh, but this time with some of my assistants doing computerized elements of it put together and then I draw on top of it and add things to it I, I couldn't help that I thought my god I, I, I must get back into doing these conjectural projects it fell between a couple of real scheme period and uh, I, I brought actually some prints of this project to show you later because you know when uh, what Akshat is saying and what you are saying when I saw your work when I came to London I just fo found that there was a lot of it's, it's very lucid in, in, in spite of technology coming in your works like as if you know the build the the forms dance like especially in this particular series of the of the Munich project you know the way you draw and the way you visualize which is in your mind it's it's something which is for me as uh, you know looking at art and looking at architectural drawings especially your drawings they are so fluid they are so like they are very sublime and it's as if there is a, a certain kind of a dance happening in your in your or certain kind of joy when you are uh, you know it's like very loose and very it's very very musical to me like a well the word choreography comes in I, I often use the word choreography when discussing student projects I, I could apply choreography to this which is a series of six stages of the same thing okay the choreography is a choreography of a three years or whatever per stage rather than a, a, a foot raised in the air but I, I think that, that I, I remember finding a wonderful drawing of uh, some ballet choreography and I've used this drawing in lectures saying however sophisticated architects are able to draw uh, we can't capture five or six dimensions working at once you know position movement trajectory blah 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 and 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 this interests me a lot the the projects often incorporate a very wide range of characteristics constituents some are to do with growing some are to do with positioning some are to do with hanging some are to do with movement of fluids some are to do with uh, you know quality of light blah 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 and, and 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 I'm interested in all of these working together and um, it's it's interesting that my my parents took me as a, at a young age to hear every kind of uh, art form they had been poor as children themselves but they wanted me to go so I was taken to the opera at the age of five I was taken to symphony concerts at the age of six and galleries and so on uh, and what's interesting is what has stayed the theatre I'm not interested in uh, galleries having put on so many exhibitions myself I'm very cynical about uh, opera I think is stupid <laughs> music I love because I can indulge and in fact it's significant that I'm married to a lady who also was brought up listening to a lot of music and our son is a composer and uh, the, the dance uh, I enjoy because I am in, I'm fascinated by the use of multiple 
conditions. I find the dance the most architectural. But I think when I, if I may say, when, I, when you look at your drawing of the 60s, when you look at the drawings of, a, of your 60s of the Red Tower and when you look now, I think you, you have loosened up quite a bit in your... Uh, to think I have. It, it's interesting, I find that the, um, the latest drawings, latest in my long trajectory, meaning say the last 10 years, uh, and, and, and some of the buildings, I'm, I'm, I'm much more... I enjoy the fluid line. Uh, you know, and I love drawing with this kind of pen because it, it works very fluidly, more than even a rotary pen, and certainly more than a pencil. I, I find it flows, and the ink almost dribbles out sedu seductively, and it flows. And I find I love this flowing line. Uh, the earlier I go back, the more kind of click pop it is. It goes click clock, then it starts to have odd juxtapositions, then it starts to hang, then it starts to grow weird, and then it starts to be fluid. So that, I would say, is bare bones, a kind of trajectory. That doesn't mean to say that some of the click clock things I'm still attracted to. And, and the notion of even changing of, of the same uh, arrangement of objects, changing from, say, click clock, gradually getting less themselves transposing into some other form is interesting because I think then one is not wedded to a consistency of form one is one is interested in a, a development even within a single project even within a single drawing even dangerous within a single building which means that I'm very um, critically cynical about the idea of consistency. Now most architects, most architects are dependent for their reputation or for their sanity or for the efficiency of their communication with the builder upon consistency. We say, we will do this building in concrete. We will have two types of opening. We will have three kinds of detail. Did you ever think that you're going to be showing your stuff in an art gallery or your stuff will be in a museum ever? Was it ever a, an aspiration? Not an aspiration, but I realized that that was, I, I realized very early on that exhibitions have a, a value. A value, have a, have, a, have a creative role. Exhibitions have a creative role. Publications have a creative role. Lectures have a creative role. Criti critical sessions have a creative role. Uh, talking about a project with your very close friends over a bottle of whiskey late at night with somebody looking for a back of a checkbook to draw on, have a creative role. And they are different creative roles and they are different, all of them, from the, you know, we will work on that tomorrow morning situation, whether you use a computer or... Because then you, you, you kind of, these, these other creative roles sponsor different edges. The edge of the drawing suggests the building. The edge of the model suggests another drawing. I mean, I've always been fascinated by the degree of predictive detail that you can put into a model, even a wonderfully made model. And usually wonderfully made models are not that creative because they've stopped thinking. But the, a creative model rarely can go into the same detail as a drawing, but can do certain things a drawing can't. The lecture sometimes is, a po is often a post-rational, as, as I am now, post-rationalizing things. And in the process of the flow of words, you suddenly realize that you've mentioned something that you hadn't consciously thought about when you were drawing. You suddenly say, you know, this leads to that. And you go, well, I didn't think that at the time, but hey, that's not a bad idea. Uh, and, and, and the exhibition, and particularly here, where you've, you've made it a very clear, very beautifully hung show, I'm able to, I'm able to distance from each piece in a way that I wouldn't even do in the studio. I probably wouldn't do in a lecture, because the lecture is compounded. Here, I'm suddenly looking at that one drawing, the one that people say looks like a dog, which I'd never noticed. Uh, 
uh, that one drawing on a, a large yellow area seen in, in many dimensions of looking at it. I mean the three-dimensionality of how you work past the thing is more than the three-dimensionality of the drawing itself, which is ironic because normally one says the drawing is talking about three-dimensionality and we stand looking at it or we have it on the computer screen. But here we are fluidly working around this static op. Now things like that sort of interest me. There's an idea there somewhere. Now, before I come on to the exhibition at the moment, one of the questions that framed, and I think you answered that in part, was that ever since I, ever since I met you this on this trip, I've been wondering what makes your work different from what Buckminster Fuller was doing. And I think seeing this and speaking to you, and I've never met Buckminster Fuller, never even seen a lecture. I think, yeah, I mean, and your last few answers, I think already answered that. But do you have an opinion on that? I think I'm very, very different. But I did meet but Mr. for a few times. I actually came to tea with Archigram on one occasion. And I think he was um, possessed. He was also surrounded by acolytes, almost like a religious person. And there was a sort of element of religiosity about what he did, an element of mysticism, uh, I think. And it, it was a kind of full on. Thing. It would be very in difficult to interrupt him, I would think. It would be very difficult to get him to talk about something else. I think I'm interruptible and I'm easily diverted. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't have the, the, the demonic conviction that he does. I mean, I'm cynically even about my own work. I think, I think some of it is, is kind of, not phony, but questionable but creatively questionable. It's a very different psychology, just like I don't know where they got the notion that I'm the Picasso of architecture, but again, I'm the, my character is so different. I suppose if they call you a Picasso of architecture, I suppose uh, it's the kind of the magnitude of your work or the originality of your work or a certain style which you've done in the world, in the direction of world architecture, I suppose. But I'm always very interested when I meet other, you know, key architect friends or, or whatever creative people, but they are mostly architects. The people that really do special things. And, and I'm happy to say that several of them are friends of mine. I've seen them many times. To watch the difference between Frank Geary in his office or at home from, say, Zaha Hadi in her office or at home is, is a quantum difference. Now, somebody may say they're roughly equivalent as cre creative architects and, you know, and they know each other, of course, and blah, blah, blah. But they are so different, so totally, 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 totally different. You know, you can't, can't, <laughs> you know, Frank Geary, a family man who has a fairly regular routine and sails a boat, you know, and, and, and like Sibelius is one person. Zaha, who lives a rather lonely life, you know, and has a, etc, etc, it's totally different. They may use the same engineer, you know, they may even have suddenly a, a similar idea about how you open a door. But the fact for me that they are so different as people uh, affects my reading of what they do. I can't help that. I'm fascinated by what they do and I'm fascinated by their eating habits, you know. Wow, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Don't you think after having met Peter and seen, I met him and spent some time with him, and now seeing these works in context, you can pretty much see him in his works. <laughs> it's just there, right? When it's you just look there. At the work, you can just it's, a, it's an extension of, of him. Yes, it's very transparent. Piece of it's an extension of, I think, the way you talk and the, what now it's like it's what you just revealed that you enjoy other architects works and other like and you you enjoy the eating the way they eat that's so wonderful and I think that's what comes on your work also it's so you know it's very tactile your work it's interesting that the two people I've just mentioned the two famous people are actually also interested in other architects work not everybody but they do I have had conversations with both of them on more than one occasion where we discuss not just bitching about old so-and-so, but actually discussing something good that they did. It's 
but not every, not every architect does that. In fact, I think I would say that what is interesting about those two architects is that they're sufficiently confident with themselves that they don't have to be bitchy. You know, I think it's people who are clawing their way up who are always the bitchiest and try and separate themselves from the world and try to be important and come late to give a lecture and the whole, you know, because they think if they do that people will take them seriously. I find the, the, the more serious achievement has been made sometimes, most, not most, but sometimes, and then they can, they can afford to be generous, they have nothing to lose. I know that you've been excited about Peter's work from the moment you saw the first sketch. Absolutely. And what, but I know, I also know that being a gallerist in Delhi, it takes a lot of courage and commitment to get him and to show this stuff here. What made you do it? Yesterday, um, like the, the day of the talk, you said for me that Renu Modi has done this show, which is quite scary for a gallerist to do. I think as a gallerist, I like to do, I take challenges very well and I've been taking challenges. So when I saw your work and I've always shown works or art or any art form in, in what I am convinced. And that's why when I saw your first drawing and Smriti sent me the drawings, I just fell in love, especially with this uh, dog drawing, I always call it the dog drawing. I, I just fell in love and I know it's a challenge for me, but I see future possibilities of architectural drawings and I don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of architectural drawings or my gallery would be a gallery of architectural drawings but I think he's, these drawings are so spectacular and, and, and the, the most important part is that why I did this show and your drawings is because these drawings fit into my whole um, approach to, my, the, to the way I work. Drawing is a very integral part of his past and of me and that's why I love these drawings and that's why I came to London to, to see those drawings and how you do and your technique which is also quite fascinating to make those negatives and then you know digitalize it and then put watercolors and again digitalize it. Uh, it's, it's quite fascinating Peter and that's why I did these drawings. Thank you. <laughs>